What is good? We're back. Got a little roster review for your pleasure. All right. So, you know the drill by now. We're hitting the roster reviews. Uh, best shots over at the Patreon. Uh, FFD, $5 holler. And um, we've been working it through. We do some on the Patreon. We do some over here. So we got another one for you. Tonight, we're going to hit old... Uh, Fuzz, one five one seven. He's got a ten team, <laughs> seventeen, <laughs> ten team super flex PPR tight end premium, second in points for and bouncing in the first round, loaded with young talent. Just unsure the route to go. Now, what do I do with the one three and one five? Looking to package up an RB and the one oh eight for a stud wide receiver. How should I go about this? Or do I draft best available and hope that I hit on a guy? Thanks in advance. Let's go. All right. So right off the rip, we have a 10 teamer. It's tight end premium, pretty standard stuff. Uh, we have, but we do have five flexes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we have two quarterback must start. And then the flexes are not super flex starts. So, you right. Can, you know. he, he says it's super flex, but it's not super flex. It's two quarterback spots. So if you got in trouble with your second quarterback, there is no plugging somebody else in. It's not a super flex. It is a two quarterback league. Yeah. And, and the Start, only, two wide receivers, two running backs, a tight end, and then five flexes, wide receiver, running back, tight end. Right, right. So the only thing, you know, you said kind of standard. To me, 10 teams, not standard. Um, it, you know, you obviously. Just standard scoring. Got it, got it. Yeah, standard scoring, super two quarterbacks, PPR, a tight end premium. Got it. Um, ten teams. Um, not standard in a lot of flexes, but that you get five flexes. Now you're, you know, you're not you're, really a you're ten team back anymore. Out. You're back. You're, you're, Maybe 11. Yeah. yeah. Maybe 11 because taking away two teams adds a lot of players back in. Right. Um, adding that, you know, a five flexes and one of those not being the, the super flex. So, you, you know, it's. It's really six flexes, really, but it's not, you know, because of the spot. You're starting 12 guys here. Right. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, 12 guys are starting, so that's deep. Two of them got to be quarterbacks. And not the deepest bench. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bench. And then big taxi decent squad. taxi squad. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, not, not a huge bench to pull from. I don't know what the taxi rules are. It doesn't specify. They all look pretty young. I don't know if you can pull up and down or not mm -hmm. um, but that that does help you out a little bit but so the roster is lamar jackson t law Derek carr huntley zach wilson jaron hall running backs are gibbs Brees, Bijan, kenny so, so sorry lamar jackson trevor lawrence two great starters and then Derek carr and then huntley you Bumpkins. know so, yeah. so you got two you got your two quarterbacks and you got your one quarterback in reserve your flex your your Injury guy and your bye week guy, Derek Carr. Yeah. Got it. Uh, then we got Gibbs, Brees, Bichon, Kenny Three Sticks, ETN, Josh Kelly, Chase Brown, Cam Akers on IR. Uh, that's basically the the running backs that he has, which is, you know, really solid. Great. Really, that's probably yeah. the best right, running back group I've ever seen. I have one team with Brees Hall, Bijan, and Jameer Gibbs on it, but I certainly don't have Kenny Walker and Travis Etienne backing them up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably the five best running backs I've ever seen on a dynasty team. I mean, that's damn near the five top running backs Close. picked in a startup right now. Close. Um, it is definitely know, the first CMC three in there and you know Jonathan Taylor is JT. the only yeah you're missing Jonathan Taylor and Christian McCaffrey from having the top five six running back so I mean that's that's the nastiest running back slate I've ever seen in a, in a dynasty so what, what else you got strong to quite strong there then he's got Justin Jefferson Puka Drake London Addison Myers Mike Williams on IR Shakir Tillman Pierce and Thornton are kind of the taxi squad guys that he has there and then on the tight end side of things Kincaid Knox Brevin Jordan, Tommy Tremble, and Davis Allen on the taxi squad. He also has one three, one five, uh, one, one eight, eight, and two nine. No twenty five picks. Uh, so he. So if you're listening to a podcast and this is not, if you're not seeing this um, up on YouTube for starting uh, the start, that's a lot of stud names. Casey just read off. He literally has. He's got a backup and backup quarterback in car on the bench, like we talked about. He's got Jacoby Myers as a backup wide receiver. We'll say what you want about the every once in a while touchdown for Dawson Knox. Um, and then Mike Williams 
Cam Akers. Uh, and then, you know, the taxi squad has, I like Chase Brown a lot. Um, Alec Pierce to be determined about what kind of passing he's going to get with Anthony Richardson in there. Khalil Shakir made a name for himself. Cedric, <clears throat> Cedric Tillman's got a potential future like those two, but you've, I mean, yes, yeah, the way the season ended, Shakir was kind of a fl- – when you got five flexes, it's easy to be called a flex starter, let's be honest. Um, a lot could go right for Chase Brown, but that – to be – I just wanted to bring all that up because he's got the nastiest starting lineup of those running backs we just talked about, Justin, Jefferson, and Puka, Drake London, Jordan Addison for wide receivers. Those are the wide receivers he's starting because he's flexing some running backs. Um, so, basically – outside of the run outside of the starting lineup zero depth mm. you know you your best two backups your best two backups are jacoby myers and Derek carr yeah i don't know how much depth everybody's running around with over here right there's probably one team that's got good depth but the starters aren't quite as quality well he said so. he said he scored the second most points in the league so that means there's one team that was up there scoring points like this and you don't know when he traded around and got some of these guys he might have acquired two of these guys right before you know so um just a studded out lineup, but it's a big lineup. Mm-hmm. Basically, no depth. You got no room for injuries. You got no room for bye weeks. You got three really fun draft picks coming up. Plus two nine is a lot of fun. Um, so, you know, when you see this much quality, I, the more quality in your starting lineup, the better. But at some point, you're like, all right, well, do I try? And one of his questions were, you know, he said he's got. You know, hey, what do I do with one three one five? And he's looking to package up a running back and the one eight for a stud at wide receiver. So he's he's headed towards a stud at wide receiver. I guess kind of, I would build on that by saying, you know, I, I I've never played in a I, I've never started twelve. Okay, so you know, I'm not really like it's hard for me to wrap my head around a ten man league and then this big of a starting lineup is it'd be like nice to almost get a quick review of the trade page of all the team just kind of see how dominant are this is a this you have to be dominant Mm -hmm. you know you have to if you got all the good players you know so if there's another team that scored there's there's there's, there can't be but two or three four contenders at the most but you you for sure have all the good wide receivers and you have two pretty good or you for sure have all the good running backs you got a pretty good two good quarterbacks um and you have the best wide receiver Right, and, 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 and maybe, then the maybe best the, young one. Maybe top five, Yeah, you know, another one out of that. Then the rest of them are, you know, the other guys that you're starting are pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, obviously if it's 10 teams, there's there's probably another, you know, like you said, there's two less teams. But, um, you know, you, you, you're a little light at at but here tight comes, end. Here, but here comes pick one three and pick right. one five and one eight. So I think, I think you're, you know, and you could play this team for 10 years, you know, take the age out of it. You could play this team for 10 years and – most likely win a championship a handful of times, but you like you know got bounced in the first round in the slap my face emoji because that's how fantasy works. Right. Um. So yeah, you got a little unlucky in the uh in the playoffs there, but you know the cool thing of you know you got Mike Williams, but like and you you don't there's there's nobody on this there's nobody that matters in this team that's not even pushing it. You know, you're mm-hmm. st- it's not like you're looking at this team going like well you know. It's not full of Cooper Cups, right? You know, it's right. full of Justin Jeffersons and his prime of plenty of time. Yeah. Puka, Drake you and know, Addison, the youngest running back, Myers Drake. is twenty seven, maybe. Right, right. So you get you, you're just you're studded out and you're young and, and you got good draft picks. So Shakir and Tillman could certainly still hit. Absolutely, and you got time. You know, the, the, you got your biggest thing on this one is you. You have to be. We I pretty much say it on every league when you're in every team that we talk about, like have some patience, but like this is having patience from the other side of like you, you, you're coming into pretty much every trade negotiation in, from a position of strength. You're probably not negotiating with anybody that either. Hey, I can't imagine there's too many in the team. There, there can't be anybody in the league that has more draft capital than you. One, three, one, five, one, eight. Yeah. Right. You probably no, 25. So he definitely the, leveraged some of that to get where he is, but fine. Well done. Um, so, guys, obviously strong roster. You you need depth. Here comes the draft picks. Very, you know, I, I you've been talking about it on every podcast y'all been doing that I've been listening to, you know, the top six, seven picks, eight pick, you know, and the super flex. When you get to one three, other than Caleb Williams being off the board, you're really not sure who you're going to have. 
you got you're going to have a, a fantastic opportunity mm-hmm. so and then you got the one five so you're basically locked in i mean you're probably getting malik neighbors there or unless you want a quarterback right well i mean at three you're you're getting drake may or Jay marvin Daniels harrison or you know it well one three we were probably, it's probably going caleb Marvin, one of those two, but I'm saying like it can't be, it can't be more than that. You're right. there's only there's only right. two you're, going. You're either getting you're getting neighbors, May or Daniels, or Marvin Harrison. If you know somebody, well, if somebody, somebody takes, could easily take Drake May or or sure, Daniels sure. and force a quarterback. Sure, it, you so you could be at three and and be looking at neighbors and Marvin Harrison or you know so basically having three and five is huge. Right. Three, you you bet you have two monster studs coming to your team. In addition to your starting lineup, so and then I think that's the main, main. The main question is: Do you hold those picks and make them, or do you try to trade for something else? I mean, I, I think I probably just keep one three, and then if I'm making a deal, I try to make it with one five and one eight because one three you're just gonna get, you're getting somebody like if you want a stud receiver, there's a decent chance that neighbors is gonna be that a stud receiver, mm-hmm. and you can get him there or Marvin Harrison or you just got a lot of options, and if you really want to make a move for a you know, a, a veteran here to, to shore up some things here. I think, you know, one five and one eight would be movable, but one five is a really good pick. So it's, do you, you take what you got, take what you know and who, who you know is good, or do you keep building on, on the youth here? Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, he, and that was part of his thing. He said, right. And he, he was probably just talking about the one eight saying, how, how should I go about this? Or do I just draft best available and hope to hit? We're hoping to hit on every draft pick we make, and we know that's not the case. Right. That's not how it works. So, if I'm this guy right here, um, I am. If I'm Fuzz, fifteen, seventeen. If I'm Big Fuzz, I am a hundred percent trying my best not to trade these draft picks until the day of. Mm. Now, when I talk like that, guys, you guys know your leagues. If you have a sixty-second pick clock, and you're drafting in June or May or July, August, that doesn't matter when. But you know your league. And so if you're not going to get a really good substantial opportunity to make a trade when you're on the clock, then get in negotiations the week before, you know, the couple of days up to it. If you're, if you're drafting on a Saturday and you know how it goes and your people, you know, you've been on the clock for three minutes and somebody drops the five Z's in the group chat because you haven't picked right away. And you're, there's a lot of peer pressure and people actually fold to that. Mm-hmm. If do you have a 24 hour clock? Do you have a 12 hour clock? Do you have an eight hour clock? Are you people, you know, are you spread out amongst the, you got 10, 10 man leagues, so that's only nine trade partners instead of eleven. Or is, <laughs> is you know, or is are two of them in Europe, or two of them on the West Coast? You know, like what do you, you really need to know? What you're up, but Casey and I have done a really good job with our home leagues, whipping these boys into shape, being like, yo, we got six, eight, ten hours here. Y'all boys relax. We're really gonna yeah. There's no rush here. We're we're gonna we get we get to do this one time a year. Yeah, you get the startup and then you get the rookie draft and everything else is just it moving guys around in your lineup, you know. So especially if you got this much draft capital, and you can make those are bazooka picks. Like you can make you already got a great team and you can just you can just grab the rookie fever by the neck with those picks and bring in actually, you know, more monster studs or have so much fun and say, Hey, look, I got, I just got, you know, neighbors and Jaden Daniels on my team or whatever, what have you. And then like those guys are going to look so good on your team. It's going to be so much fun, but don't expect to get, you know, don't, don't misplay your hand of, Hey, I'm going to wait until I'm, I'm on the clock. And then all of a sudden you got a 60 second, 60 minute clock and you don't, you know, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Hadn't have put neighbors or Drake may or Jaden Daniels or Marvin Harrison on your team. You can always trade them later, but is the one three with neighbors on the board and Jaden Daniels on the board is more valuable at that moment than picking one of them and moving forward. Even if the guy, you know, wants to pick neighbors when, as long as they're still, if it's with the one three, it's still more valuable before the pick is made. Now, don't get me wrong. Three weeks into the season, if neighbors is like, "Oh my God, look at this—the best receiver that ever hit the league." If he, you know, comes out and looks like Odell Beckham Jr. in the first three weeks, now it's just, you know, understand what I'm trying to say. You, you still have, you just, you have a little bit more power before the pick is made to make that trade. You get a little bit more, a little more bang for your buck there. Um, so, just one, I got off on a little rant there, but that was, you know, know your league. 
make plans for how you're going to make trades around those picks because I wouldn't want to be trading those picks away, right? I'm, I would trade for those picks right now, but I wouldn't want to be trading away that pick right now, those picks right now um, as we sit here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. The, the longer you can go for the most part, unless you get an, a ridiculous offer, um, it is always going to be more beneficial, especially, you know, you're, you're within a range of there, there is no way that even as this fatigue prospect fatigue or whatever people want to talk about wears on where people are always, you know, are, are we sure this guy is, you know, whatever, as, as time goes on, it's just going to happen. You know, Drake Mays falling, Drake Mays rising. Right. You're with you're 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 not sitting at one seven where or, one one thing could change and now all of a sudden the tear break moved up one. You're at one five. That's a good point. And the tear break, you're you're just not gonna get out of the spot where there isn't a coveted asset in there. So you're golden there. Great point. Um you're not on that verge. Right. Uh, I even I normally I think it goes the other way, but you're definitely right. There could be a you know, oh, we we love this guy, but then he went instead of me saying like last time I was here, I was talking about well, if it, you know, if Jay, if if Ad Mitchell or Xavier Worthy or this player goes to the right, you know, if if mm-hmm. one thirty one takes Coleman and all of a sudden Keon Coleman and Patrick Mahomes becomes the most fun thing we ever talked about, and he jumps up there, right? You know, or it if, expands it to one eight. <laughs> but if the op right, but if the opposite of that happens, and all of a sudden you know, hey, this guy, you know, AJ Brown went to Tennessee, and there was like, oh man, there's no way they can get him the ball. Yeah. You know, if two or three of those things happen in the draft and it makes you upset, then I, I great point one three one five super safe does nothing but gain value. Um, so let, let's look at the at the at the one eight here and, and at, did you have something else to say there your starting lineup is just so deep it, it on a week-to-week basis some of these guys are going you know you you've you've pushed so much equity into the start lineup it's impressive it's it really is impressive but like you know uh jameer gives may get you know 12 points this week and may get 26 points that all that that's just the ebb and the flow of that dynasty and and you've pushed so much into here like a Dalton Kincaid, if Dawson Knox sticks around and Shakir keeps coming up and Diggs is still on the on the team, I love the outlook of Dalton Kincaid. But if you know, if all of a, if all of a sudden Diggs isn't there and they're still and they're working through some things, you know, Dalton Kincaid just kept got especially the last couple of games of the season in the playoffs. The last game they played against the Chiefs, Dalton Kincaid was getting target hawk. You know, he was crushing and Diggs Diggs just you know had like one wide receiver top top wide receiver finish in the last eight games or something you know mm-hmm. um just to say when you're in the trade negotiations with people like can you upgrade off of trevor lawrence do you upgrade off of lamar jackson you know lamar jackson is you know the new uh, second time mvp and from for my money i think gonna look fantastic in a in the the new offense next year the second year of this you know they got started slow Odell's probably not coming back. You know, the tight end got hurt. They've really found something when he got, when the um, main tight end went out. Andrews. When Andrews went out and the other guy came in, say Flowers is doing his thing, you know, are they going to bring in, they got, like at this point, the defense is ridiculous. Like their only goal right now should be to bring in more talent for Lamar to distribute the ball to. Mm -hmm. So like, but he's still Lamar and, you know, his game is, lends itself to a little bit more chance of an injury and you know again joe burrow's wrist fell off but you just think of him getting you know trevor lawrence just missed his first game and since high school or something mm-hmm. like that you yeah know? yeah like trevor can run but he's not just running and you know i just like do you take because your team is so good and you have the cap you have so many good names everywhere do you just say okay i'm gonna get let me take a look let me let me minimize downside because we all want to maximize upside mm-hmm. but like you know, can I minimize some downside? And I let me go from Lamar, who probably has the most upside of him and Patrick Mahomes. And, you know, maybe even because he doesn't run as much, maybe like week to week fantasy points upside. But the way Chiefs have been playing the ball lately, maybe they don't have. Maybe it's just Lamar and uh, Josh Allen are the week to week, like the two guys that could score the most fantasy points most times. Mm-hmm. Right. But Lamar just seems like the guy who's most likely to get hurt. Maybe I could just go from Lamar to this guy. Maybe it's just a straight up one for, you know, a, just a lateral move that somebody's like, why'd you even make that trade? Just to take a guy and just move over to a guy who's a little less CJ Stroud, you know, mm-hmm. trade straight up, bang, bang. Maybe every, maybe every week 
Lamar might outscore him a little bit, but Lamar's down games, you know what I mean? This mm-hmm. and that. I, you know, I, mean, I tried to trade you Lamar Jackson for CJ Stroud, but he's basically the exact same ra- rationale for me on a team where I'm super young. And it's just like, well, Lamar is my upside player. But the year before that, he didn't finish the season for me. And, you know, that's just my kind of thing. It's like, hey, I'll trade you this guy because you don't have quite as many top end players I do. You're a lot deeper than me. And I was like, well, maybe I can work out a trade with Casey. I'll take a little less top end. I'll take a little more safety. You give up a little bit of safety. You take a little more top end. We'll meet in the middle. And that trade didn't work out. You didn't want to do it. And I, and that's fine. You know, that's kind of what I would be looking at there. Um. Obviously, I wouldn't be in the business of trading away Trevor right now. Nobody likes Trevor anymore. Yeah, well, he's, uh, you, know, that's, no, you know, nobody wants to talk about anything in between anything. It's always got to be, well, you know, unfortunately, you talked, he got thrown in the generational conversation. And now since he isn't out there being Patrick Mahomes, he's a bust. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, he's not a bust. That's ridiculous. No, I'm, I mean, right. But nobody wants, like, that's what you're right. That's what I'm, I'm just following that up with. Yeah. Like, nobody really wants Trevor Lawrence at this point. He's a bust. So he stinks. And it's like, well, no, he's, he's actually pretty good. Yeah. Like, he's don't, just, so don't sell him. He, yeah. He's just not scoring. He just didn't score a leap fan. There's a lot of other, but he plays for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right. Ride that. Like, way. I don't know how long you've been watching football or been a part of it, but there's been like three times in their entire existence they've been relevant. Mm-hmm. And he's made him relevant for the he last one two of years yeah he's yeah, one of those you know and they just fell apart this year mm-hmm. uh, i don't really like doug peterson all that much but i, I thought it was a, a huge upgrade from where they were and i thought i thought they should have fired him this year and change like it was good to shift the culture shift it one more time yeah but they, shift. but balky's balky's uh a, it seems like a bit of a control freak and a loose cannon mm-hmm. and shod khan's an idiot i think mm-hmm. uh, but better than where they've been but they need to surround him with better options, but T Law is probably not the option to move off of things right now. Unfortunately, you can't. I don't think you're, you're agreed stepping stone up. So, unfortunately, that's a bummer. I would love to see you get another quarterback on this roster, um, just because it just seems real volatile, real quick. Because you have to start to. You can't exactly. even be like, exactly. "Hey, I'm gonna put Puka in there, mm-hmm. and I'll, you know, mm-hmm. it'll be fine." Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, you know, I think he said Patrick packaging up a running back and one eight to get another wide receiver. Which, yeah. Uh, another stud wide receiver would be great. I'm I'm down with it. Like, but you know, you could you can probably you know we can get you can get neighbors and you can trade from neighbors to something else out of the one three spot or do whatever you want with one three. So, you know, one eight and a and and a, and a running back is. What are your thoughts on on that? I mean, I think the running back for me would be probably be Kenny Walker that I'd be looking to move um, or Et I guess whichever one you can get better value for. I think I feel better about Et game to game. Uh, yeah. I like Kenny Walker a whole lot, but um, it, it, it so what would be your tactic there with kind of what he was suggesting with the one eight and and a running back and you know can can we go get a, another quarterback can we go get you know another tight like for me personally with all these flexes like I, I'd want some more tight ends because I think you can flex out of one you know you get another good first of all I'd get one of the I, I need one of those top four or five tight ends on this team gotta have it you're in you're in 10 man every you can get a difference maker at the position you need to get one of those difference making uh sure. tight ends it's you gotta have it and Kincaid can be there and if he gets there then you can flex him out but mm-hmm. I, you know i'd love to you know try to get a mcbride or a hawkinson at a at a discount of being hurt mm, or good point. um you know some, some andrews people seem to be a little down on andrews he's probably mm-hmm. going to be good for you know three four five more years mm-hmm. um I got to go. You know, I I think I think, you know, upgrading, upgrading there. And and of course, always adding another stud wide receiver is awesome. But, you know, I think you can get that done in the one, three to one, five range. Sure. Um, If you don't if you don't decide and you You could get a quarterback, you you could do it at one, eight, two. You you could get another quarterback at one, three or one, five. I I feel better about neighbors being good than I do any of the quarterbacks out, you know, outside of Caleb, probably. Um, I think Jaden Daniels is going to score fantasy points. Mm-hmm. If I were, you know, if I were you, you were talking about quarterbacks. I'd be trying to get Richardson or Herbert because the, the Herbert on the down value of, and mm-hmm. I think everything just went to the fucking moon with the chargers. Mm-hmm. You just got a great head coach with a fantastic track record with quarterbacks. He's bringing in Greg Roman. It's a training wheel fucking offense to right. get your quarterback going in the right direction. I like it. And you're you're bringing it. You, you got your defensive coordinator coming in from Michigan. You're bringing in 
Navarro Bowman to coach your linebackers, Bo. Like, right. like you, everything is trending where exactly where you want it to go. Herbert would be a buy for me, and you could probably you out. could you could get Herbert or plus. Kyler. You could you could get Herbert plus for Lamar Jackson. You could trade. You could trade. You now could, people are, might flip out about that, but I mean Herbert's awesome. I just people people are just down on Herbert right now. So well, that's but that's how you play the game. Right. That's how you do. Like that's how you that's how you go. That's how you get better. Addition by subtraction. Right. Yeah. Because of the plus, obviously, you know, and I, that's what I'm like. It's it's you got a bunch of guys in this lineup right here that are basically would be untradeable on everybody else's team, you know. So you already got half the good player. You got freaking the you got half the first round of the startup. So like it's going to be tough for you to make moves because all the guys that you have it'd be tough to trade away, and nobody wants anybody on your bench. I love the idea about the tight ends that you called. You called a couple guys that like the. Getting Hawkinson on the down right now with the ACL is a good move. I got your sleeper right here. He just called a hundred ball. Like Evan Ingram, go get he's he's yeah, that's he's a, that's a cheap one. He's still not going to be expensive enough. Evan Ingram's about to catch two hundred eighty balls in the next three years. Like, and you got Trevor Lawrence. So I don't know if he's under contract for that long, but well, he just yeah. got paid. He I mean, maybe only six. Maybe he's there for two or three years. But you know what I mean. Like he's yeah. he's in that offense. Calvin Ridley may or may not be there. And the way that offense works, you know, in the last show you just put out, y'all were talking about what happened with the Jags and Trevor Lawrence and stuff and your that mock draft and the Christian sure. Kirk and Zay Jones getting hurt. For sure there in 24, like, he's got an out in 25, but he's locked up through 24 for sure, out in 25. But, got an out in 25, but, but I mean, it's the same. It's the can't code, be there in 25. You know, like if you just called 100 balls, yeah. you're going to – and yeah, I'm sure they need to – they're definitely going to be looking to bring in a wide yeah. receiver if, this year if but you want up top five upside for cheaper to be putting in your starting lineup then i am 100 percent down with with evan ingram and i think he's still super i mean you know i would be looking i mean he's not even 30 years old yet i would be looking for trade partner that has evan ingram that was not like the main part of the trade i would mm -hmm. i would go get evan ingram singularly if i had to but i would be looking and be like mm -hmm. oh man what quarterback does does this guy does the guy that has Evan Ingram does he have the wide receiver that I want does he have the quarterback that I could you know make a lateral move with and wrap it up into a pack like I would trade right now be it's probably too much to ask but I would give you Lamar Jackson I'd be so happy to give you Lamar and bring back Evan Ingram and um, Justin Herbert Justin Herbert uh, yeah I mean you know judging on where you know <coughs> excuse me when we're doing these mocks right now I mean. Man, everywhere we're Evan Ingram's going in the ninth, tenth round still. So I mean, say, my, you know, the the one mock that I was in, he was on he's on my team. That's what I mean. Like you know, I and if it's not Evan Ingram, I'll get Cole Komet. Like I, I it's like yeah, not near just, as much volume there. But I mean, I'm you can but, get Cole Komet you know, so much cheaper. Tight end six or seven on the year for most of the year. You know, it just yeah. I don't. I mean, I'm not here to rain on your Cole Cole Komet parade for sure. But I'm he's not. Evan Ingram had multiple double digit catch oh games sure this year, I, you know for sh sh like 100 percent um that just that would be that would be a potential package like i'm obviously it's a lot to ask this happened to us one time when we put out potential trades when we were talking about going from actually i think we said if you could go from justin herbert down to jordan love and make this package and uh, giving aj brown and getting back justin jefferson and the dude hit us back he was like those guys are actually on the same team the, mm -hmm. the, the the jordan love guy has justin jefferson and the, he had jo justin herbert and aj brown so it's very unlikely the guy that has in this league that we're talking about here the guys that has justin herbert has um evan ingram that's you know obviously it's a one in 11 chance but it's probably worse odds than that um Here's, or one in nine chance because it's a 10 man league. But here's what I'll say about Evan Ingram, real quick. Mm -hmm. If you look at the scores all through, the, you know, I know you're not trying to rain on Michael Kmet, great, but you kind of are. I didn't rain on those, it's just those big games. Him. Those big games that made up his his total points were when all the other guys were hurt. There's no way they're not going into this season and picking up two or three more wide receivers. So once that once that happens, the volume dies down. He's a very I'll, I'll take him. For, I, very he, good player. Bro, he he had, had 11, 13, 12, 6, 11, 9, 5, 6, 9, 23, 33, 17 and a half, 12, 23. What are you this, look reading? That's all the end like of the season. Fantasy points? I'm reading fantasy points for his I'm just that's his fantasy points right there. That's through those first 
games is where that, everybody was healthy. Is that premium? It's not premium, obviously. Okay, it's, so it's and, just standard PPR. But all I'm right, saying, but time out, time out. Just, I'm just pump the brakes. I'm just saying he didn't score a touchdown until week 15, so all those points are off catches. So in premium, well, you give him 50 percent more right. on the catches. I'm you just, know what I mean? I'm just saying you're just saying he's not going to get. Kamet's not going to get nearly the volume. If you look at the points that he's scoring through all these games before all their wide receivers got hurt, the, it's not. It's not. You know. It's not. Cole Komet's just fine in, in the same I didn't vein. say he wasn't just fine. I'm just there's a difference between 70 catches and 100 catches, and especially that's 30. But if you give me a half point more, that's 45 more points. And Cole Komet, and you give me some of that terrible sounding positive TD regression for Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram had maybe two touchdowns this year, and they both they didn't come yeah. before week oh, 15. Sure. So just, uh, just I'm not going to stand for the slander. And uh, I wasn't slandering. They were slandering. You no, I didn't. I was just you just don't put Cole Komet's catches catch total beside no, Evan Ingram. Certainly not. Cole Komet's crushing the touchdowns. Evan Ingram I, can't but sniff I guess the my, my point is is that the catch number, if added more wide receivers, which I'm not sure how they don't, because they got mm -hmm. Zay Jones and Christian Kirk under contract and Ridley's out the door. You know, you got to draft one and bring in one or something. Sure. And I think that volume goes down. Whereas, you know, Komet, I, you know, I don't I don't think anything's really gonna hurt kind of what he's doing so basically my point with the commit thing was he's still cheap he's super was that cheap. They're, they're in the cheap. same area of a draft and around the same price that if you couldn't get evan ingram you could still get the idea of somebody like a cole commit a pat Fryermuth, who just went into uh an arthur smith offense who two two years ago caught 80 something balls Last year, we just went through a myriad of injuries. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's some options in there with some with some good volume. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. I love your point about getting the, trying to get a better tight end and Dalton Kincaid being your second tight end to be flexed out if he continues to uh, uh, rise up. Um, so, you know, to be determined with this team, man, congratulations, handshake. Great, great starting lineup. Uh, I think you need to try to be doing two for one trades or, you know, or two for threes where, you know, you, it's, uh, I'm not, it, I'm not trying to trade Brees Hall, B. John Robinson or Jameer Gibbs off this team, you know, um, Drake London gets a quarterback dude, you know, it's, I'm not, it's hard to make trades with this lineup. I, that's why I went to the quarterback position because you yeah. got the running backs and wide receivers that are in your starting lineup. I don't want to be trading away. Um, yeah, if you, you wanted know. to get rid of a, a running back outside, I wouldn't get rid of those top three, Gibbs, Brees, and Bijan. But mm -hmm. if you wanted to get rid of one of the other ones with a pick to, to move up and help a big package get put together, 100% down with that. I can't tell you exactly what to do because I'm not in your league. I don't know who exactly wants to trade, but I, I'm down with that idea. All these things that we're throwing out there, I think, are all. To, f but to finish up, let's go back to the patience part of it. Bring it, throw it to us. You know, like you're, I, I think you're coming in from a. I, I pretty much know you're coming at a position from a position of power with any trade negotiation. So just say, Hey man, you know, just shoot us a question in the discord and say, Hey, I, I'm giving Travis Etienne and one eight for this package. What do you think? Or this lined up to, to, to move off of Lamar Jackson to get a little bit safer. I'm not begging anybody to trade away Lamar Jackson. I have a Lamar Jackson in a league that in a super flex league that I'm in with Casey, that is a lot of fun. And and there's a, um, as my team develops, there's a little bit of dangerousness, you know, of to, as the Lamar Jackson guy that I wouldn't mind moving off of, even to give away a little bit of that upside to minimize. I got my team's really good, and I, have, I haven't put it all together yet. It's a it's an auction rookie draft, so I got a bunch of money coming up for this year's auction rookie draft, and so. My biggest threat in the league is Casey, and he do, he we basically went with the same exact strategy, and so our teams haven't been ready yet. But when we get ready, we're going to dominate the league. And I just, you know, I've been trying to figure out how to move Lamar Jackson in the most strategic way possible. And this the way he had finished the season was good, and I think he's going to be awesome next year and so trading him is probably going to sting a little bit and i don't want to see him get hurt it's just you know it seems a little more likely and it's like all right well if he did get hurt and he wasn't on that team it would be a little easier on yeah. my eyes and i don't want i don't want to see anybody get hurt right so so i you know a couple couple other ideas before we get out of here because okay. we're going a little long so two nine yeah 
is, is, you know, you have that other pick, you don't have any other 25. So, you know, you either got to, you know, eat it in 25 or figure out things in season to, to get your 25s back or, or whatever. I'm with the roster you have, it's what, you know, at some point I'm, I'm always acquiring. And at some point I'll, I'll push the chips in for a year and, and acquire pieces, uh, which you have seemingly have done. You got a good team. You, you said you were already second in points for, so all that stuff's going well for you. You probably could use a little depth, but also as, as this off season goes on, you know, veterans through the rookie fever part, this is a pretty good team to add some veterans to because you're, you're ready to go. You're young. It's not really going to hurt you that you got maybe an Amari Cooper or one of those older guys aging out on your team because you have plenty of... So you could probably take that 2-9 and go get, go buy a, a, a veteran that you know is going to score a ton of <laughs> fantasy points this year. Like um, like Mike Evans or Amari Cooper or, you know, even, even a little lesser Deontay Johnson or Terry or Godwin or, you know... Buy one of those veterans who are a little cheaper because once everyone gets swept up in the rookies because they got to get younger and younger and younger. And it's it's real easy to acquire a veteran at this, at, especially in those rookie drafts. People are giving veterans away to just get, you know, other rookie picks or, you know, to take a sh- And look, the second round this year is going to be great. But you can you, you kind of set it in your main question, you mitigate a little bit of risk here and you could get it all. It's not that much fun. Mm-hmm. To, you know, it's not fun. You know, it was it fun to have Taji Spears sit on your and then it could be awesome this year. A hundred percent. And do I want to miss out on taking the Taji Spears? No, but you, I don't want it when on this kind of team. I don't want necessarily Taji. I, let's put it. It's not that I don't want. Mm-hmm. I don't need Taji Spears to be sitting on my bench cl- collecting dust for a year. And hey, I could trade him here for sure. It's not. Mm-hmm. I'm just use him as an example because mm-hmm. he's a good player. He's been waiting. Blah blah blah. Tillman, you know, maybe you took him at two nine in an earlier. You know, just there's some other options that you could go down and, and acquire a veteran in the in the rookie fever part of this that I think you know you just need a little bit of depth here just in get you know cause, so you can shoulder an injury or two mm-hmm. throughout the season as well as you know we talked about you know one of these running backs let's say let's let's take Kenny three sticks or whatever right now uh maybe going fifth fourth fifth ish round you know tri- and, and maybe maybe you package them up with the one eight and do something else but just like we were talking about with the you know quarterback going down you could take Kenny three sticks and go trade him for Joe Mixon and then maybe even acquire Deontay Johnson, you know, just basically moving down to an old, you don't, you got the three youngest best ones Mm -hmm. and then ET, Mm -hmm. you can, you you can afford to trade back to a veteran guy who people are like scared to death that this guy's going to age out on my team and die. Give him 30 Kenny three sticks and you can do a, you know, a one for two or three and you can, or maybe you got to add, you know, Tillman into something or Pierce, just throwing names in there. Brevin George, somebody who, you know, you got to throw acres. So maybe you got to throw somebody in there, but you can get a two for three done where you're just getting players that, you know, can score points and adding a little bit of depth, I guess is. Yeah, I, kind I of, would, I would probably, I, I, I see where you go. I probably want somebody a little bit, even maybe safer and younger than Joe Mixon. And sure, or, just, I'm just looking at a draft. Joe's a, Joe's a good call, but the second, like the Dion, I, you know, Joe and like somebody, Joe and Hollywood Brown, somebody strong, you, know, you know, keep going. You know, guy, Tony Pollard stunk last year. Nobody wants him. Trade down to Tony Pollard, grab another two receivers. Can I get Josh Downs and Deontay? Can I get, can I add two receivers and go down a running back? Can I go down to Swift and get, you know, basically. Yeah, I'd much rather. I'd I'd much rather go down to Swift than Joe Mixon. Swift's still a little on the younger side, so maybe people aren't. You get a little bit more time. Uh, I will say, uh, I've so. so Just, just some ideas. You can, you can. Nobody wants Najee Harris. Straight down to Najee Harris, and you can find yourself at one five and be like, "I love these next two picks," you know. Or you can be like, "I'm at one five, and I." You can find yourself in love with five, six, and seven, and maybe trade from five and be like, I, "I'm serious. I'm so happy with either one of these three, and or go from five to six or five to seven in the rookie draft and catch, you know, the Joe Mixon or ca- get grab a DeAndre Swift or a, like like kind of value wide receiver just for to drop back from five to six and you still like if you literally are sitting there at five and being like i don't care if i get brock bowers or this guy or that guy whoever it is as they fall and get all jumbled up every time you know you go through a rookie mock they're kind of out in different orders like if you're like all right i'm at five and you know i brock bowers i already got a quarterback at three or i got you know neighbors at three and I'm looking at Jaden Daniels and Brock Bowers. I don't know which one. I'm good either way, you know. 
maybe I go, maybe go from five to six and you just let somebody make that choice, but they give you, maybe their type, maybe they give you Marquise Brown for free Mm -hmm. or they give you somebody, you know, just, uh, you get one player that's you throw on your bench is completely startable in in a regular two or three flex position, right? Much less five flexes. You know, like you said, that's a, that's a really easy way to grab one more starting player. Um, and the same, like if you if you just take your two stud, you, you could do that from five to six or five to seven, or you could do it from three to four. You could be like Marvin Harrison's at three, and you'd be like, I kind of, I'm, I'm, you're, you're a neighbor's guy, and you're like, you could, you literally have them on the same plane. Well, then why not see if that guy, if somebody's like, dude, I'm, get, I'll take Marvin Harrison right here, and blah blah blah, and now you go from three to four, you got two picks in a row at four and five, and you get you the insert cheap, you know post hype sleeper guy here right you know um and then maybe you maybe you got your two studs figured out and you've shaded back from three to four or five to six and seven and you've got an extra player because you met you made that one trade back and you got your extra marquise brown or you took on you you, you know whatever whenever your rookie drafted you felt good about amari cooper or whatever person it was that you know you got a, a josh downs and somebody else or you know something like that um i love josh downs to be a, a stash on my bench in, in and this for this team maybe you're like all right you know hollywood or somebody like that um but maybe you're at one eight and it really went chalk and the seven pick nobody did anything crazy and you're at one eight and you know you're looking at those guys and you find a team that just you got you got two picks ahead of that plus your one eight maybe there's a, maybe there's a bad team that doesn't even have maybe there's a bad team and they took a cult they took you know drake may but they're a long way away from Drake May. Drake May's not going to drag them to the promised land. And maybe you trade back from 1-8 to 2-4, 2-5 or something and get a first-round pick next year, you know, or, and a player, you know, and depending yeah. on how fast in that, because you got no picks next year. And, and, and or maybe you maybe it's from 1-8 to 1-12. Maybe you're like, all right, well, I like all these guys the same. You got your Brian Thomases and you got your Xavier Worthies and you got these guys right here and the guy from Oregon and this and that. And, um, maybe you're like, all right, well, I could trade back three or four picks here. And, you know, uh, the trade back and you give away, you know, the Mike Williams and to get that extra, because, you know, maybe you don't drive, maybe this person doesn't have the right draft draft picks. Maybe you don't trade back as far away and you get a first round pick next year. Mike Williams might not, I mean, you don't have enough, you don't have a ton of depth on this team. So maybe right, hanging right. on to Mike Williams wouldn't be a bad play, <laughs> but Mike Williams getting often injured Maybe he is a name. Maybe he pulls that off. Maybe that's, you know, minimizing downside. Like, you don't have a ton of depth, and Mike Williams is one of them, and he's hurt all the time. So maybe you go from 1 8 to 2 1 or 1 12, you get a, and you give Mike Williams an addition to, and you get a first. Because somebody's like, well, I, I, I can get Brian Thomas right now, man. Mm-hmm. I, I'll give you my first next year. I'm, spo- I'm middle of the pack team. You might, you're not always dealing with the worst team in the league. Maybe you get a first round pick from a middle of the pack team next year, and maybe it's the 1 10, but maybe it's the 1 4. You know, right um, now, if you, you know, if you feel in a certain way with that, that's just an idea to trade back off the one eight. If the package isn't there for the wide receiver. Yeah. So, I mean, I think in, in, in summation of all this, it's, it's a lot of uh, kind of trading down a little bit to, to add a little bit more. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that you need to, for sure. It'd be great. You know, if you maybe, maybe the one three is neighbors. So you add one more, but adding another stud wide receiver is great. I think that's a great idea, but you know, I think uh, the QB trade down, the RB trade down, the 108 package and an RB to add another wide receiver and or tight end or something and another receiver, I think would be good or, or just a trade back and in, in, in throughout the draft uh, would be good as well. Adding a adding a vet maybe with the 2-9 pick, I think is, is all solid stuff there. So um, let's wrap this one up here. Uh, we'll get out of here. Appreciate you guys. Keep them coming. Uh, five dollar holler on the discord uh, we got t-shirts at revelry bruco his like subscribe comment below tell us what you think uh, and we'll catch you on the next one